Hey, how's it going people? This is Hellbent and welcome to Auto Hotkey Commands tutorial number three. In this one we're looking at the pixel get color command. Um, this is going to be a two-part series. In the first part I'm going to show you how to get the pixel color off of your screen and we're going to create a little project that is uh, we can use in future projects uh, to help us with this command. Um, in the second part, I'm going to show you how to actually retrieve that information, like how to actually use it in scripting, so that way, if you want to find a particular color on the screen, then this is what we'll do with that. Okay, so the first one, um, we're going to be using a GUI for this first part. So if you've never used a GUI, don't worry about it. We're only going to be using really simple stuff easy to follow but if you'd like to know more about the GUI and how to create them and that I have a tutorial series I'm in about five I think I have five tutorials up on it right now but if you're watching this in the future there'll probably be more um, I'm also dealing with a little bit of a cold actually it's more of the flu but uh, it's uh, very mild right now okay so let's just jump in so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create make it so that way our script doesn't constantly prompt us if we're running it over and over again if we want to run a new instance next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create an emergency hotkey so I always add this to my scripts just in case something happens you never know what's gonna happen with the running of a script or whatever so just as a force of habit I just always add an emergency exit so I'm gonna create number pad zero control plus number pad zero is a hotkey and this is just gonna exit the app so like I said it's just an emergency we're not actually gonna need it but I always add an emergency exit okay next what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our simple GUI so we're just gonna have GUI show and then we're gonna have a width uh, let's go with 300 a width of 300 and a height of we don't need it to be too big so I'll do it 200 and then we're just gonna call this what we're calling the lesson uh, pixel get color okay so that's the title and now we need a return Um, next what we'll do is we'll add in so that way you know how I have this red X up here we want the GUI when you press the red X we want it to exit it so we'll add that in okay now all we need to do is add a control to our GUI so we will create GUI add and then button because we're going to use a button to actually start the process of checking for a color and we're going to set it to X10 and Y10 so we're going to have it up in the top left corner we're going to set it so let's see we have a width of 300 and we only need the one button so if I subtract that from that side and the other side so that will give us a width of 280 and we'll make its height 20 mm, let's do 30 nice big button okay now we need to attach this to a label so we're gonna call our label how about get color and then we'll just add some text on it uh, we'll call this color picker okay We'll check out what we have. Oh, we need to actually create our label since we have a call to it. So we'll come down here and we'll just use our get color. And for now, we'll just add a return to it. But actually, you know what we'll do? We'll make sure, we'll test to make sure that it's actually working, even though we know it's going to work. okay and we'll test what we have so we have that and if we press on that we get our working button okay so 
now what I can see is going to be a problem is because we're going to be picking colors all the time what we don't want is this to get buried underneath what we're checking on so right now if I was to click on this page this is going to get buried underneath it right so what we want to do is we want to make sure that this always stays up on the top so we'll just add in that right now always on top and we'll get rid of that space okay so now we actually come to the part of the program where we're gonna get it to do our color picker so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a loop and we're gonna in that inside of that loop we're gonna constantly check the state of a key and um, if the key state is in a certain position then what we want to do is we want to check the color that's underneath our cursor at that point so let's set that up now because we're going to be using a button what we don't want it to do is we don't want it to start grabbing the color the first time we press down on the mouse because we're going to use our mouse button to do it but we don't want it so right now if we were to run this if as soon as we press down on this button it's going to start to take detecting the color so we don't want that we don't want it we want it so on the second time we press down so the first time activates it and then the second time and third time and fourth time and fifth time after that we want it to start detecting so what we need to do there is we're just going to create a variable and we're going to call it i and we're going to set its value to zero to begin with now what we're going to do is we're going to come into our loop and we're just going to have an infinite loop because we're going to have a way of exiting it later uh, next what we're going to do is we're going to get assign our key state that we're looking for so we're going to say left this is a variable this is a variable we're creating so we can use any name we want here and we're going to assign this the, the key state for the leftmost button which is L button And then we're going to use our right mouse button afterwards also to stop the process. So like I said, we're going to have a way of exiting out of our loop. We're going to use our right mouse to do that. So I'm creating another variable called right mouse. And we're going to have this get key state for the right. So this is our button. Okay, now that we have that, what we need to do is, remember we, what I said, that we don't want it to start detecting as soon as we press this. So we need the first time, we need to actually release the button, and then the second time we press it is when we want it to start detecting it. So we're going to have a conditional here. We're going to say if our leftmost button equals false, And if our i variable equals zero, we're going to make it so that i now equals one. And you'll see why in just a second. Else if get that rid of that. Else if our left mouse button is pressed, or if it's true. and i equals one so this is where that comes in so even the first time we press down because the value of our i is going to be still zero it's not going to start the color picker just by clicking it this first time we have to release which will go into this conditional make this conditional true which will change the value of i to one which will allow us then to finally go into this one so until we re actually release the mouse button the first time it's not actually going to be able to go into this conditional and in here what we're going to do is we are going to get the mouse position so we need the coordinates of our current cursor position no no wrong sorry get position 
and now we need to create an output variable now since we're not doing anything special with this we're just going to use x for our x and we're going to use y for our y and then we're done with that but what we're going to do before we continue on is up at the top of our script what we're going to do is we're going to change how it detects the position so we're going to change how it's related to so we're going to make sure that our the position our mouse position and our pixel con uh, position is related to our screen rather than a window because when we run the GUI and press the button our positions are going to be based if it's on window it'll be based on this so if we go to click on this screen all of a sudden our our coordinates are all messed up and all that so we're just going to fix that right off the bat so we're going to say up here chord mode and then we're going to select what we want the chord mode to be related to so we're going to do mouse and we're going to do pixel and then we're going to have them related to the screen dimensions okay now we can come back in here and know that we're not going to have any problems next what we're going to do is we're going to use our pixel get color and we are going to have an output variable and we're just going to call our output variable so this is what's actually going to store the color in so whatever value we get for our color this is the variable that's going to hold it so we're just going to call this our color next we need our x location and our y location and the x and locate y we're going to use is this one here because as soon as we press down it's going to get that x and y store it into that variable and now we're going to use it in this one here so we need x and y and the last thing we need to do is the format for our color so what we're going to do is we're going to use the the rgb or red blue green format and i'll show you at the end of this tutorial or at the end of this part why we're going to do that okay let me think what do we need next i think i think we're done so let's just let's just change the color of our GUI now so we'll do GUI color and we're gonna change it to whatever we stored into our our color variable and I think I'm done here so I'll close that up a little bit last what we need to do is we need a way of getting out of our loop so we'll do else if my bad else if our right mouse button this time because we're going to use our right mouse button to stop this whole process if our right mouse variable equals true or in other words if the the key state of our right mouse button equals true and we're just gonna break and I think I think we're good let me see uh, I think we're good okay I think this is our program so I'll just uh, get this condensed down a little bit so what we ended up with now because of my indentation I have a few extra lines but uh, we can see that still we're in 27 lines and we're going to end up with a nice color picker that we can use and to do other things with okay so we're going to run this and have a look okay so now we need some colors and we will let's uh let's do use html color codes okay so here I have the ability to select my own colors but we're gonna basically replace this color picker so I've selected color picker it should be collecting the color now and if I hold the mouse but the right left mouse button down you can see that it's changing the color of my GUI um, let me see did I do RGB um, 
What am I missing? Oh, that's why. Okay. This is, that's what I was talking about before. Ah, <sighs> man, oh man. Like, forgive me, I'm, I'm sick, okay? We all get brain farts from time to time. Okay, let's do that again. Now we'll get the right colors. Okay. So yeah, that's why we do the RGB. Um, certain other things, uh, there will be times where you're not going to need that or you're going to be using just uh, the default settings, which is I think the red, red, blue, green, or, yeah, the, our blue, the red, blue, green. But uh, for the most part, it's uh, just using the, the red, green, blue value. So there you go. Now you can save this as a program and uh, run it whenever you need to find a color. Okay, in the next one what we're going to do is we're going to edit this to add a edit box in it. So that way it's not only going to change the color of the background here, but we're also going to have an edit box that's going to give us that color. So that way we can use it in scripting or whatever. So so for example, if we want it to... If we want it to check to see if a certain color is whatever we'll have that colors code in there all right that's it for this one i'll see you on the next one have a good day